They say there's a sucker born every minute, but it's not because of stupidity. It's because we want to believe in the idea of technological progress and because we want to believe that we can have what we want with no consequences. Unfortunately, technology seldom seems to really work this way. People get angry when you try and take their sweeteners away, but guess what? That's one of the major signs of addiction. When I talked about chicken breast being poor quality nutrition, or rice being full of arsenic, nobody got angry. They just gave a bit more consideration to other food options. When it comes to sweeteners, their reactions have been much different. Do you really need sweeteners? It's taken for granted that desserts are very sugary, but in reality sugar is something of a substitute food today, and originally it was extremely expensive, and today it's used because it's extremely cheap. Cream is actually very sweet, and in medieval times sugar had to be imported into Europe all the way from India, and a small box cost today's equivalent of the price of thousands of dollars. People actually made pies to preserve food originally, and it was mostly fat. This kind of dessert was designed to give a boost to energy so you could get enough food to make it through the winter. Later on, currants were added to the recipes and then candied fruits, and ultimately sugar started to feature in them, and that led to what we have today. The Tudor equivalent of the mince pie was the shred pie as well as containing the familiar dried fruit, cinnamon, ginger, and nutmeg. There was originally another essential ingredient, meat. Over time, naturally the spice and the fruit in particular content rises and rises and rises. By 1600, 100 years later, you would have doubled the amount of raisins and spices in there at the same sort of cost. By 1900, there was next to no meat left at all. In modern times, not only has meat fallen away from desserts, but even the cream and custard of most desserts has been replaced by wheat and sugar and vegetable oil. These are much cheaper and they're also much less healthy for you. Cream or custard with a bit of sugar is not absolutely horrible as a dessert, and I would much rather see people have that than have sweeteners created in petrochemical plants like you're getting in many desserts today especially when they're taken throughout the day, which is only going to encourage yet more snacking and thinking about food. I think that is one of the biggest issues we have today when it comes to obesity. It's okay to eat food, even some not so good food sometimes, but instead of constantly nibbling on low calorie nutritionless food, just save your eating for meal time and eat natural foods and this will help your appetite control itself naturally. You could also try glycine if you really do crave a sweetener. And this is a somewhat sweet amino acid that is deficient in most people's diet today, since most people don't have daily broth anymore. Cream itself is also pretty sweet. And when I add in glycine, that's enough to make it taste like a full on dessert to me. For a treat, sometimes I'll add a bit of cream to whole milk, and this tastes like liquid ice cream to me, it's just delicious. Instead of eating it and being hungrier, as with a modern dessert, the cream really satisfies you and you simply don't want more. People have been asking me about allulose for some time now. I didn't really have much enthusiasm at first, but the more I read up on allulose, the more surprised I've been and this supposed miracle molecule has not surprised me in a good way. First off, it is properly called Psychos, which is a hilarious name. Not that it matters, but I wonder if all the quacks promoting allulose would dare to promote it under that name. Second, it is an altered version of fructose that your body is not able to easily digest. Not a great start, and it gets a lot worse from there. 
It's also created from bioengineered E. coli bacteria in a giant vat cultured in soy product. That is, it is a biosynthetic chemical and could possibly be affected by many allergens and contaminants that exist in E. coli and in the soy that's being fed. And just because one batch or brand isn't contaminated doesn't mean another batch or another brand won't be. So don't be fooled into thinking this is a natural product like table sugar that has no unknown risk. It's a very processed food that is totally unnatural. A lot of ingredients in packaged foods today are biosynthetic, which is one of the many reasons to avoid them, and citric acid is one of the most obvious and worst offenders of this. But they are usually present in pretty tiny quantities. This is a sugar substitute though, and not a very sweet one. So you can easily take 20 to 30 grams in a day if you're having these expensive cereals or expensive quote-unquote healthy protein bars. If anything, people tend to eat even more sugar-free stuff than if they were eating regular sugar. And remember, the other stuff in these processed foods like granola bars and all this garbage is also very poisonous. And that's the last thing you want to be eating. Many people are sensitive to MSG, for example, and this is probably the reason why it's almost all biosynthetic. It's how it's made. But MSG is only present in small amounts in processed foods, and you can easily have 10 times as much allulose as you're going to get MSG in a product. There's so much evil in the world. As with most of these so-called natural sweeteners, it's not non-caloric. Your body actually uses about 5 to 10% of allulose as energy by converting it to other substances. So if you're having a whole bunch of this stuff thinking that's non-caloric, that's just wrong. You're probably going to get more total calories than if you just had one sugary snack. It's also not as sweet as fructose either, so you really get a lot more calories for the same sweetness than you might think that you're getting. Along with some exciting health concerns, such as extra strain on your liver and kidneys as they try to process this stuff, and this seems to be true of all sweeteners of this nature. After all, there would not be a safety limit of 36 grams a day if it were truly healthy. You would be able to get your daily energy from it, which you technically could with vinegar, for example, which has been shown in NASA experiments. Now, a lot of these sweeteners are substances that exist in natural foods in tiny amounts, or they're generated in the body in small amounts as a byproduct. You might think this means they're safe and natural and that they're supposed to be there, but they're really not. These are misfires, mistakes of metabolism. Every enzyme in your body can accidentally perform the reverse operation or a similar but wrong operation under the right circumstances. This is why the body produces homocysteine, for example, but your body works very hard to get rid of these unwanted molecules and there is no reason to make the strain even harder. Your body can accidentally produce allulose, but it tries to get rid of it by excreting it or converting it to something else if possible. This is going to be something like sorbitol or fructose, which also convert between each other and which are also both big health menaces that cause a lot of glycation, liver damage, and other issues. Glycation is one of the strongest drivers of aging in the body, especially when it comes to damaging collagen and elastin, which are what lead to wrinkles. Allulose is a very strong glycating agent, even stronger than fructose, which in turn is many times stronger than glucose. Okay, so the way to think about this is you can roast your meat at 375 degrees for an hour, or you can roast your meat at 98.6 degrees for 75 years. The answer is the same, you're browning. And if you don't believe me, here's newborn rib cartilage nice and white, and here's 88-year-old rib cartilage nice and brown. Okay, you are browning as we speak, and if you had orange juice this morning, you are browning seven times faster. And that browning reaction is the aging reaction. It is what causes wrinkles. It is what causes cataracts. It might even be what causes Alzheimer's disease.
Allulose also inhibits several enzymes that allow the body to absorb carbohydrate. This sounds great, but it means your gut will ferment these products instead. This causes flatulence and diarrhea in the short term. What you really have to worry about is the long-term effect of this stuff fermenting in your gut. The bacteria in your gut are ultimately dictated by the fuel you provide for them. When you drink milk, you attract probiotic bacteria like L. reuteri and bifidobacteria that have many health benefits and are probably the most important ones in your gut. But when you eat sugar, you attract pathogenic bacteria like Streptococcus mutans and your gut becomes overrun with fungi. For these hard to digest carbs, you also have to worry about killing off good bacteria. What effect will this have on probiotic bacteria? Now, allulose is shown to increase the numbers of some probiotic bacteria in the microbiome of mice anyway, so the news isn't all bad, but it might take studies that span years or even decades in which do extensive testing to determine if it has long-term negative effects on the microbiome because there's many, many different probiotic organisms in your body and if some of them are being harmed while others are promoted or some of the ones supposedly probiotic aren't as probiotic as are claimed then this could cause issues and i can say that at any time i stop taking sweeteners that my gut seems to shrink significantly and if i start them back eventually the bloating starts to come back it may not be fat per se just inflammation but it looks just as bad and it's even more unhealthy for you. And I have to wonder how many people out there who have a bit of a belly and otherwise look pretty healthy have issues like this going on. The antibiotic resistant infectious bacterial strain Klebsiella pneumonia is also known to thrive on allulose. So this kind of dangerous infection could be promoted by its use. And like I said, the fuel you provide ultimately dictates what's going to be in your microbiome. So if you're doing this for years, then who knows what's going to be developing in there. And that can easily spread to the rest of your body once it's in the gut. Another alleged benefit is that it partially blocks glucose transport into the gut. If you understand how these transporters work, then you will be very concerned by this and you will not take it. These same transporters are what take up DHAA or dehydroascorbic acid and ascorbic acid, which is called vitamin C, for example, and many other nutrients as well. It's not just glucose, it's many nutrients. So even if all the other issues were somehow resolved or not as bad as they sound like they could be, then for me, this would be more than enough to stay away from allulose for any reason there's just no reason to take something like this I'd rather just take sugar especially if you take it with a meal otherwise you won't get all the nutrition that you need and your hunger won't be satisfied which may lead to binging what are you eating there's a donut stuffed with M&Ms that way when you finish the donut you don't have to eat any M&Ms Allulose is one of the worst sweetener options in spite of being promoted as a wonder molecule. If you want a truly safe sweetener, then glycine is a truly non-caloric option and it's almost as sweet as allulose, but it has no drawbacks. Glycine is worth trying, but even regular table sugar is much less risky than allulose, which is going to probably cause more damage to your liver than straight up fructose would. And it's definitely going to cause much more glycation because fructose usually metabolizes pretty quickly. So even though it's very glycating, it's usually out of your system pretty quickly, but allulose does not. So it's going to hang around destroying your whole body anywhere that it's in there. And this is going to be really hard on your liver and it's going to be very bad for your skin and it's going to cause wrinkles. So if you want a sweetener that causes wrinkles, then allulose is the one for you. Otherwise, don't take it. Allulose is a biosynthetic chemical produced by GMO E. coli bacteria in these giant vats of black goo. And it's not as non-caloric as you might believe and can be converted to fructose and even more harmful substances. And this includes sorbitol, which causes a lot of problems in the body 
and it's going to cause liver issues and much, much more. Due to the body's inability to easily process it, it's bound to burden the liver, and it is the liver that preserves our metabolic health. And metabolic health is the main reason that people are turning to these artificial sweeteners in the first place. The problem is that you're taking these things thinking they're natural, but they're not really natural and that they're going to make you metabolically more healthy, but they're not. Allulose is also highly glycating within the human body, even more so than fructose, which is seven to 10 times more glycating than glucose. And it hangs around in the body for a much longer period of time. And this is going to cause a lot of wrinkles and liver issues and probably kidney issues too. Due to its effect on carbohydrate metabolizing enzymes, it causes stomach and intestinal upset and will probably cause microbiome issues if taken long term. Due to its effect on glucose transporters in the body, it will interfere with nutrient absorption from food. That alone would be enough reason to stay clear because it can cause both malnutrition and increased appetite. Allulose can also be metabolized by certain very dangerous infections. These are bacteria that are known for antibiotic resistance and could lead to very serious consequences. Even simply taking sugar would probably be a much better option than allulose. And it's alarming to me that so many influencers with a medical background are promoting this garbage which is not healthy whatsoever and may actually be pretty dangerous. Well, I really should be going. Got to tell the family that the, uh, the patron didn't make it. It's the hardest part of being a doctor. I think. 